Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today we continue the story of Noah that was introduced yesterday and will conclude tomorrow. Uh, always good <clears throat> to remember with the story of Noah some of the, the ancient or sacred uh, rabbi commentary speaks of with Noah and that is again that he was righteous uh, for his day and his time but if you put him in another day or another time like with Moses he would not be found to be as righteous because there was one thing missing um, in his life or his story compared to people like Abraham or Moses or how you and I are supposed to be today and that is when God came to him uh, and told him he was going to destroy the earth because he was tired of man's wickedness and so we're going to build a build an uh, ark and save you and your family the one thing Noah did not do even though he obeyed the Lord completely he didn't he never interceded for the world he never asked God's mercy for the world he never said well could we get a little more time and we can work on some of these hearts so that's what the um, the only thing the the ancient rabbis and their sacred commentary on this passage have against Noah you never ask God's mercy for the people and the other ancient patriarchs that we hold to a high level like Abraham Moses Jesus they all did they all did and when they did it, it did change God's heart and so that's the pattern or it's just always good to bring that up because that's how you and I are supposed to act today I'll be the first to say I'm Lord God smack it all down wipe it out start over <laughs> you know but I I have to grow in this too but so we have to grow in this this is how Jesus was his first response was not kill them wipe them out even though it seems easier sometimes but Lord a little more time a little more mercy let's have some more patience let's try again let's change this and do that <clears throat> and so um, or like even Moses well Lord wipe me out too then <laughs> standing in the gap and that's what Jesus really did for us on the cross right so that's got to be one of the attitudes we grow into and we always uh, remind ourselves of when we come across the story of, of Noah uh, second we see the first thing today in our passage the first thing Noah does when he gets outside of the ark is he worships God before he tries to find any extra food or trying to build a shelter or look out for anything with his family the, basically the first thing we see him do today is he worships God he offers God a sacrifice to offer God a sacrifice <clears throat> is to worship that's they go hand in hand together and so that's the first thing he does is he offers this sacrifice he's worshiping God and notice what he's offering some of the some of the unclean animals or the clean animals the clean ones now remember the clean ones are the ones they can eat so it is a big sacrifice extra sacrifice there goes more food out of the mouth of, of my mouth and my family's mouth and we're going to offer it to God so it is a sacrifice or offering something that they would want for themselves this goes back ties back a few chapters to the sacrifices of Cain and Abel right and Abel giving the great sacrifice something that he would want the first and best of his flock and so this is more patterns for us remember these first 12 chapters especially are setting foundational patterns and principles for how we are to live life in our relationship with God and so today is uh, a continued one on worship offering a sacrifice <clears throat> every time we get we every time you and I so when we offer a sacrifice something that we would want for ourselves but we give it to God that's a sacrifice and that is also then worship so that doesn't only happen when you come to church to the church building but any time throughout our day in our lives if we offer something to God that we would want for ourselves we offer that's a sacrifice that is a time of worship a moment of worship an act of worship sometimes that could be maybe that's food maybe that's just a, a time your time Lord I'd really like to have this in personal time right now but I'm gonna give this time to you and maybe that's a thing or money or maybe that's a dream 
Lord, here's a dream that I have, but I'll, I'm going to give this up for you. Whatever it is, whatever becomes something that you give to God that you wanted for yourself, that's sacrifice. And that's true worship. That's the true worship God's looking for. And then, so flip side, every time you come to worship, what's the sacrifice you're bringing? You come here to daily mass. What is the conscious, intentional sacrifice you are bringing to this altar? If you're not bringing something consciously and intentionally, then you're not really entering into true worship. And then you're not going to get, a, God's not going to get a sweet smelling odor from you. Even though you could be standing here physically. What is the conscious, intentional sacrifice you're bringing to him today from your life? Father, we thank you so much for just the opportunity to, to gather in your presence to worship you, to offer you a sacrifice of our life. We pray today that you would help us enter more deeply into worship by giving you a greater sacrifice of ourselves. And help us, Lord, to always as well look out for the rest of the world and be ready and willing to intercede for them. Interceding for more of your mercy, more of your patience, more of your time for a true heart conversion. We pray all these things together in Jesus' name. Amen.